Hello and salutations to all. Welcome to a very special edition of Forward Pass Thinking Audio Content. As always, I'm your host, John Ders, but as I said, this is a very special episode because of our guest, the you know, Dr. Dave Damashek. Dr. Dave Damashek, how the heck are you? Uh, I'm doing great, man, and uh, long last we get the kibitz on your podcast, so I'm positively over the moon. Oh, I that's that's me. Don't you know? Don't uh, I'm awful at talking. Apparently, okay. I, as I said, I'm a little starstruck. I I made a list before I started the podcast of everybody who like my wildest dreams to get on, and no jive. You were number four. How does that make you feel? I went well. I, how can I possibly say until I know who the first three are? Okay, number one, Brett Favre. That's number one. Okay, he's better than I am at football. Number two, Russell Wilson. Okay. Number he's three. Better at foot, he's better at football than I am, but I dare say that I'm a more fun interview than he is. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Okay, number three is maybe where we get into some hot water. Number three is Rich uh, Eisen. Oh, well. I bid you good day, sir. Oh, man, I no. just lost it. <laughs> I get it. He's a big star. Hey, so when you got your doctorate in mustard, was there any lead up to that, or did it just happen? Any lead up to it? Yeah, there were decades and decades <laughs> of research um, by me. Um, you know, I didn't pass it off to an underling. I did all the studying myself on what foods taste good with mustard on them and which don't. And as I found out, most foods taste better with mustard. <laughs> Okay, that's good to know. Um, so what do you think happens first? Do you send football baby off to college or Tom Brady retires? <laughs> um, let's hope. Let's hope that uh, we can escape the scourge of the Patriots <laughs> sooner than, uh, than 16 years from now. But I don't know, man. All bets are off after that second half and overtime performance, right? I don't yeah. know. Really, when is it, when is it going to be over already? I mean, that, you figure like, all right, you know, yeah, the the Seahawks that defense will be too good. They won't beat the Seahawks. Well, they beat the Seahawks. Then two years later, now they're back. They pull off a twenty five point rally. What's left? How long does this have to go on? <laughs> well, I think that second half in overtime was the best advertisement for his two hundred dollar diet book. I think I'm going to buy it. How could you not after that? Oh, yes. I I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there. And, you know, what about his life save? Maybe his choice in uh, red ball caps aside, uh, (laughs) what's not to love about Brady? Uh, There's, I don't know, there's nothing not to love. That's actually my next question. So I'm a millennial, so all I know is this Tom Brady, you know, everybody hates him. Everybody calls him a cheater and all that stuff. Was there all this, you know, 49er fatigue when Joe Montana was winning all those Super Bowls? Yeah, as a matter of fact, as I think back on it, there kind of was. Any dynasty, that's probably bound to happen. Um, It's funny to think back specifically on these Patriots where they started out, not unlike really the Joe Montana 49ers, Mm -hmm. that they started out that these you know they pulled off the big upset of the St. Louis Rams and America was excited about it it's funny to think that now in hindsight i mean they had that three week stretch went when tuck rule in the snow against the uh the mean raiders so everybody liked that then they went into pittsburgh and upset the pittsburgh steelers i don't know how many people enjoyed that but nevertheless <laughs> They go and then they beat the uh, the juggernaut Rams. So that was crazy, and everybody was excited for the Patriots and behind them, and they were all about team so much so that they didn't get introduced individually at that Super Bowl. They were introduced as the entire defensive unit, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the '81 Niners similarly were Cinderella because they whipped the Cowboys in the middle of the season. Then they went back in there and they had the Joe, I had the Dwight Clark catch, and America was excited about that because the the bully Cowboys had been whipped. So, uh, yeah, but then people eventually turned against both those teams, which is why I often say the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 70s may be the most lovable dynasty America's ever seen, save maybe Jordan's Bulls. 
Well, growing up, so I'm a millennial who grew up in Chicago, so I think, you know, my brain is just, you know, wired to love Michael Jordan and the Bulls. But um, to go back to the 49ers, it's so weird to hear you say that people don't like them because now it seems like it, they were universally loved. So I wonder how history will record the Patriots. What do you think about that? Well, I feel like for all the scandals, and as I've often uh, said to my Patriots fans' friends, that 150 years from now, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, curious young football fan will ask after the early 21st century Patriots, and they'll go to the NFL history book, and they'll open it up to that page, and all they'll see is a giant stain, because that's what they put on pro football. But... At this point now, as these things tend to go, they've been in our lives now, for better or worse, for a decade and a half, and I feel grudging admiration being the chief emotion that uh, Football America has. Is that right? I mean, I feel like you're right that everybody hates Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny that in a world of actual bad people, that there are (laughs) legitimate people out there, sports fans out there, like, I hate Aaron Rodgers. I hate Sidney Crosby. Like, you hate these people? What have they ever (laughs) done wrong? They played for the wrong team. You hate them, though? You hate them. But, um, yeah, I think think it's funny, that question, because most dynasties do start out with you kind of like, hey, it's fresh blood, this is kind of exciting. And after the second or third title, you're like, all right, let's get somebody else in there now. Yeah, I guess people just like what's new. Um, so every year on the Super Bowl, I always think it's a very surreal experience, but I want to know what it's like for you. You're out on the field before the game. You're talking to players. What's that like? It really is a crazy thing, and I, 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 I kind of get where people are coming from. I find it semi-obnoxious when people are like, I'm so lucky to have this job, and, oh, you know, I, I love my job and all that, but... You know, I, I was I, the last couple of years. I've been walking around down on the football field, <laughs> forty-five minutes before the Super Bowl kicked off, talking to guys that are about to play in the Super Bowl, along with uh, Ike Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew, guys coming over to them. I mean, Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman came over and hugged Maurice because he's their idol, and Maurice is like, "Hey, this is Tevin. This is Devontae," and I'm like. Hey, Devontae Freeman, I'm shaking his hand. Like, good luck in the Super Bowl in 45 minutes. It's bizarre. I have no business being down there. So, of course, I love it. It's the best. Um, Does Maurice Jones do not like the nickname Pocket Hercules? Because where did that go? That's gone now. That's a good question. I don't know that he – I've never asked him about that. I've never asked him about that. I was almost – I was almost able to ask him when I was on your show, Fantasy and Friends, but then, like, the mic cut off and I was no longer allowed to talk to the talent. So I missed my opportunity. Well, that's uh, yeah. That was your star-making turn, as a matter mm-hmm. of fact. We all we all held that one in high regard. But um, when you appeared on the show, but um, yeah, no, I don't know that he has any beef with with that. I think he doesn't. I my sense is he doesn't love height jokes. Oh, okay. You can he's he's open to being teased about almost anything, but for some reason he doesn't love height jokes. <laughs> Okay, um, so as we were talking about, you were at the Super Bowl. Who's more impressive to watch live, Tom Brady, Julio Jones, or Lady Gaga? Well, I'm I am such a square. I never. I mean, I I've always known that I'm an intrinsic square. I'm a nerd and everything. <laughs> but like, I I guess what I'm talking about is that out of the loop old guy thing. Now, like, I really. Didn't know if I had ever heard a Lady Gaga song. Well, and then come she on, no way. Singing it. Well, once she started singing, I recognized a couple of the songs okay. she did. But going into it, I didn't know if I had ever heard a Gaga song. Um, I'll be honest with you. I have no strong feelings about it, positive or negative, uh, about her performance. I, I don't. Pop music just ain't my thing. I don't know. It, it didn't, doesn't speak to me. It all sounds kind of the same to me. Okay, so I'll I guess. Her, I'll kick her to the side. Um, Julio Jones, I mean, you know, uh, you always hear him called a physical freak. And it is weird because when you're in his presence, it's the, the thing that jumps out at you 
not unlike Cam Newton or Marshawn Lynch. It's just how giant a human being he is. I mean, he's a massive man. And that he is as fluid and fast and everything else is, is uh, striking. But um, And if Matt Bryan kicks a field goal and puts it out of reach, mm-hmm. toward, you know, in the middle of the fourth quarter there, that catch goes down as one of the top two or three catches in Super Bowl history that Julio made. Yeah, it's and kind of this it's weird even, purgatory yeah, it, state. It's not even, uh, yeah, it's not even now the best catch in that Super Bowl, yeah. uh, thanks to Julian Edelman. Okay, so I should have just cut my losses after me and Matt Harmon agreed that Lady Gaga was a national treasure. But um, <laughs> uh, so if I so I'm gonna turn to the um, uniform monitor right now. I think right. that the gray face mask is the best accessory a uniform can have. What do you think? I will agree with that largely, but not a hundred percent. I think two... for instance. There's two uh, teams that I think don't or shouldn't have the gray face mask. One is the Patriots, unless they go back to their old school um, 80s uniforms, or the Seahawks. I think both of those teams do not uh, do the gray face mask well. Well, see, I disagree with you. I think oh, wow. that the Seahawks gray face mask is better than the royal blue. Mm-hmm. And I think if they were to go back to a gray helmet, I think that the ones that should have a white face mask are – the Vikings. Really? Because I thought yeah. theirs with the gray face mask would really put that whole thing together. It looks good with the gray, but go back and look at the uh, look at the 70s and early 80s when they okay. go to the white face mask. It's quite striking. Uh, the Browns could go with the white as well. They wore that in the 80s, and it looked rather nifty in my opinion. And the Chiefs continue to go with the white. Yes. They, they, they've had the white face mask for probably 40 years now, and uh, I think it looks grand. But for the most part, yeah, I would agree with you. I think the Steelers should go to a yes. gray face mask. I mean, they're you know they're named after steel. Shouldn't their face mask be the color of steel? Yeah, exactly. Um, so what what's your favorite all-time uniform, you know, throwback or current? In pro football? Oh, um, no, I guess it could be any uniform. I would say, I mean, the one that's the most classic, unchanged, and everything else is the Oakland Raiders. Mm-hmm. I also like to think about uniforms over the last few years in terms of matchup, which two uniforms go the best together. And I think uh, if you went, when you go with the Chiefs wearing their red pants at the Raiders, that looks Ooh. that's as good as, that's as good a that's as good a, a combo as you could see. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know which one's really good? The Dieter Brock Ram uniforms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dieter Brock Ram is good, although I like that with the gray face mask, back mm-hmm. to your point. Um, I like the best uniforms in the NFL are are these. The Raiders home blacks. Yes. The Chiefs with the red pants mm-hmm. and the white jersey. Uh, but that's not second, just to make clear. I think the <laughs> Niners... Mm-hmm. The skins when they wear the gold pants at home, those are great. Huh. I think the Steelers home uniforms are great. I like the Jets and the um, Colts. I like the monochromatic always. Those would be my top NFLs. Uh, college football, I go very traditional. Love Texas and the burn orange. Matter of fact, when they go all white, that's about as sleek a look as you could get. I like Bama with the numbers on the hat. I love the numbers on the hat, like with the Chargers throwbacks. Yeah, the, that's the see. They people say like, what? They wear those throwbacks? No, they don't. They wear a weird variation on those. They wear like two shades of blue, and mm-hmm. there's no number on the hat, and all that weirdness. Yeah, the powder blue of the of the Chargers AFL. Those might be the best. Um, in hockey, I love the Philadelphia Flyers and the New York Islanders uniforms, even though I hate those two teams. <laughs> I like the Penguins. I like the Maple Leafs. Those are good NHL, NBA. I like the Celtics. I like the Cavs when they wear that wine, I believe they call it, mm. wine color. Um, and baseball. I go, of course, go Yankees. I love Dodgers home white. That 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 oh. that, 
glistening white that they wear. And then the key, what's the key? It's the red number. The whole thing is blue and white the whole way, top to bottom. But for no good reason, they just have a random red uniform number only on the front. On the back, the number is blue. On See, the front, I like it's a red number. Why? I like when the Cubs know, have the the, the Cubs have the red bill. I think that really pulls that all together. Well, the Cubs do look very good. I think. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, the Astros have cool uniforms these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'll say the Pirates. I'll say the Giants, black and orange, the two best uniform colors you can have, I think. Um, yeah, okay. While we're talking about baseball, I usually don't talk about baseball on this podcast, but um, there's some Hall of Fame news today. Did you hear about this? No. Homer Simpson, a Homer Simpson statue will be added to Cooperstown to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the episode Homer at Bat. How do you feel about oh Homer God. Simpson getting put in the Hall of Fame before the all-time hits leader or the all-time home runner leader? Well, I don't care for that uh, that last detail. Relatively speaking, it's. I mean, imagine, as I say, imagine going to the Hall of Fame, taking your little kid there, and like, ah, oh, I want you to see the Hall of Fame. This is my beloved sport. Like, all right, Dad, let's let's see this. Where, let's, who has the most home runs? Like, well, he's not in here. <laughs> oh, well, well, okay. Well, then who got the most hits? Well, he's also not in here. Then wait a second. What are we doing here? Who's in this place? It's weird. That being said, I love Homer Simpson. I love that episode. I love The Simpsons. It's the greatest sitcom of all time. So I hail anything that honors Homer and company. Homer, in my book, the best sitcom character ever. Um, he's yeah, he's definitely up there. I'm trying to think off the top of my head who would be better. I've been watching a lot of Dick Van Dyke lately. I think that Rob Petrie okay. is vastly underrated. And, Very strong. Uh, Good for you as a young fellow, especially. Yes, that's a strong one. Sam Malone, mm-hmm, um, he's up there. Is, uh, is one of the greats that you'll ever see. Um, Steve Carell, um, Michael Scott, I think is up there. Yes, that's great. Although, if I had to choose from that show, would you go Dwight? Yeah, I guess I'd go Michael Scott. No, nah, I'd probably go. Yeah, you're probably right. Just thinking, is it Jim or is it? Uh, or uh, Dwight, I don't know. And then um, what about Hank Kingsley from Larry Sanders? See, that that's where my age kind of, you know, I I know of the show. I haven't been able to watch it yet. It's not on Netflix. I think I don't know how I would go about watching that show. I think it's about to be or has recently been added to one of those okay. uh, connected uh, things. So, I'll yeah, have to I seek that out, up. though. But before we uh, wrap this up, I want to throw out uh, Hank Hill. I think he also should be on there. Okay, I'll hear that. I'll I'll accept that as a as a reasonable answer. Is he top three? No, but is he top twenty five? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Okay. Um. So talking about Hall of Fame again, should I be preparing myself now to be or to not be upset when Randy Moss is omitted la- or next year? I mean, how much sillier could this thing get? I mean, I, well, that's like, like it though. If Terrell Owens and Randy Moss don't get in, then it's over, right? I feel like, you know, you talk about the perception thing and all that. Randy Moss, everybody seems to have forgotten. And, by the way, I would never debate Randy Moss as a first ballot Hall of Famer. But if the standard is like, well, they, you know, these these uh, after-the-fact rationalizations, like, well, he dropped too many passes. Randy Moss took off a couple of years when he was in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Like, just right in the middle of his career was a no-show for the Raiders. So, did T.O. do anything like that? No. So, I don't understand the knock on T.O. I mean, no, I, 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 think we, I mean, we do know what it is, obviously. Yeah. It's, the, it's petulant sports reporters <laughs> having one arrow in their quiver that they can use against a superhuman athlete, which is that we can hold him out of the Hall of Fame because he was mean in the locker room to me after the game. So this is what they're gonna. This is how they seek their vengeance. And of course, the joke is ultimately on them because you're cutting your nose to spite your face. It's yeah. It's you're just voting ridiculous. for the Hall of Fame. You illegitimize the Hall of Fame by not having the best players in there. Yeah, so who, they, who's the joke on? They they need to fix it. Um. So my next question, I shouldn't be doing this because I couldn't find any confirmation online of this, but do I remember your name being in the credits for the Norm Macdonald Sports Show? 
you do remember that. Yeah. I thought I did. Is Norm McDonald the same guy off camera as he is on camera? Uh, what's your perception of him on camera? Um, t uh, talking with weird mannerisms, kind of uh, being very blunt. Um, you know, uh, you know, there's no door that says scoundrel. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> I like the uh, pseudo impression that you slipped. <laughs> I kind of half did it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he. I found him to be in my limited time with him, which was maybe five or six weeks. Um, yeah, he's yeah he's he's not a normal human being, <laughs> but you know, I mean, you always hear that about comedian types or comedy writers, and most people are fairly normal. But you know, they're you know their their brains. Uh, you know, he, uh, I, I don't mean that in a bad way either. When I say he's not a normal human being, his brain works at a different uh, on a different level. Not even better or worse. He just focuses on different things. But I found him to be very funny and, uh, I mean, really, you know, a deeply funny human being. I, uh, I saw him with some of my friends right when the Tiger Wood thing was happening with all his shenanigans. And he, he like, to debate or to uh, defend Tiger Woods, he kept saying, like, wait, you're telling me uh, Mick Jagger sings records and then he lays with women? No way. Does sings, <laughs> sings records is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I don't know why. He also looked at me. I was sitting in the front row, and he looked at me because I have a very loud and annoying laugh, and he looked at me like he's never heard such a loud and annoying laugh, which really made me feel special that that man has heard so many laughs, and he's never heard one so loud and annoying. Well, muzzle tough. Yeah, I'm That's proud a feather of myself. in your cap there. Um, yeah, he, uh, like I say, yeah, he was fine. You know, he was fun to talk about sports with i i the guy the first day of that show the first day of production we're just sort of sitting around getting to know each other probably 10 or so of us and he brought up the canada cup where paul henderson scored the uh, overtime game winner mm -hmm. and i knew who paul henderson was and no one else in the room did, and uh, so we bonded over that. He liked oh, me nice. after that. Yeah, so I felt good. That, that His head was in the right place, that he knew to respect somebody who knows who Paul Henderson is. Did you contribute anything to the Kyle Mooney uh, sketches, or was that all him? No, I don't remember the guy who he did them with, what the guy's name was, but uh, I first became aware of him through Kimmel. I don't know where Jimmy found stuff of his, but... Um, it's some of the funniest stuff I've, yeah. I, I, I've ever seen. Him just mumbling at people <laughs> at events where he's out of place. It was super funny. And he and the other guy, like I said, I can't think of the guy's name. But... Might have been Beck Bennett. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it was. I would know him. Okay. Um, They came up together, though? Yeah, they uh, have stuff on YouTube together. Oh, I never knew that. That's funny. I'll send you a um, link. But uh, but either way, yeah, he, uh, no, that was, was another guy who was his shooter, and I think would cut all the stuff and everything for him. But um, yeah, he was he was deeply funny. Um, you could see that immediately. Okay, uh, Doctor Dave, are you ready for the lightning round? Oh yeah. Okay, so very quick, just give me your answer. It's going to be an A or B choice. Okay, here we go. Cheers or Simpsons? Simpsons. Twitter or Facebook? Uh, Twitter. Cake or the band Cake? <laughs> oh, Cake. Oh, wow. Okay. Monday Night Football or Sunday Night Football? Monday Night. Dinner or dessert? Dinner. Garfield. What am I, a 52 year old lady? <laughs> Garfield or Marmaduke? <laughs> By the way, I like dessert. Um, Garfield. Jack White or Jack Black? Oh, Jack White. Tomlin or Chuck Knoll? The Emperor Chaz Knoll. No offense to you, Coach T, but we're talking about the Emperor. Penguins or Pirates? <laughs> Penguins. Pittsburgh Penguins or Pittsburgh Pirates? Oh, you stinker. <laughs> Same answer. Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny? Bugs. 
Buzz okay. way funnier than Mickey. That is correct. I think you only answered incorrectly on one. Which was? Oh, wait, no, on two. Cake the Band is better than Cake, and Sunday Night Football is better than Monday Night Football. All right, let's go through both those uh, for for more in depth analysis. Well, why why would uh, why is band why is the band Cake? Uh, what did wait wait what did the band Cake do even? They did long uh, skirt or short skirt long jacket. They did they're going the distance. Um, He's Satan is going my motor. the distance. Yeah. He's going for speed. He's all alone. Um. Why is somebody your age into cake? Um, they were they were popular when I in the, my formative years. They they came out they? when I was about I did, fifth grade. Okay, because it's yeah, it seems like uh, that was about fifteen, sixteen years ago where they were really at the height of their powers. But um, cake. I mean, it's easy to paint that with a one brush. Like I don't like sheet cake or I don't like an angel food cake. But then that means to me you're ignoring. Flourless chocolate cake, hmm. carrot cake, cheesecake. I mean, you really want to listen to those records more I don't, than you want to have those? Oh, yeah. I'd rather go with the records and pie than with cake. You'd rather go pie than cake? Oh, definitely. Any day of the week. Well, you know, that's your friend Adam Carolla talking there. <laughs> um, I could do a bad impression of him, too, if you want. Ah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Len. That's all I do. Uh, yeah, here's the deal with uh, pie. Here's the deal with pie. Um, <laughs> Rich, they need to extend the goalposts. He thinks that under any circumstance, pie is better than cake. I agree Maybe with him. he's... Well, I like pie. Don't get me wrong. I like a chocolate chess. I like a coconut cream. I like a Boston cream. Well, I would. I sure hope that you like pie. Every year, I watch your pie off. I do. I love pie. It's a, it's a passion project. Um, <laughs> That's the, the start uh, for me, and probably thousands of others. That's when I know it's the holiday season when the Dave Damashek pie off is on. Thank you. I yep. appreciate that. That that means the world to me. Uh, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. Because it starts the holiday season. You get the three there's football so much, games. It's fantastic. Yeah, there's so much. Yeah, it's, there's so much hope, and that's the thing. You know, it's the same thing as when you have a three day weekend. What's the best day of the three day weekend? It's Always the, the Friday. Eve. Well, I'll do you one better. Okay. If you have off Saturday, Sunday, Monday, go out on Thursday night. That's Ooh. the night. That's the night for the twister. Thursday night, then you go into work the next day, and but on Thursday night, you're like, now all I have to do is go into work tomorrow, <laughs> I'll breeze through that, and then who knows what happens the rest of the weekend. The rest of the weekend, almost unfailingly, will not live up to the Thursday night. Same thing with Thanksgiving, like, yay, Thanksgiving is almost here, that's great, so we'll get a couple days off. Then we go back to work for like three or four weeks, but then we get the extended vacation, Christmas and New Year's. Oh, who knows what will happen. The best time is that Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. You see? You know, is it nationally known as Blackout Wednesday, or is that a local tradition in my neck of the woods? I don't know when it began, but it was not uh, – It was that, I, I, it came into being during my lifetime. I don't okay. know where and why, but – uh, yeah, what was the other one? Cake or pie? And then I mean, Monday night or, or Sunday night football. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a hard one to answer. I think that uh, in the olden days, when there was no such thing as Sunday night football, at least Monday night was a good. It was always, a, it was almost always a good game with about the same percentage of quality as Sunday night football now has. But the thing about that one was, it got you through the first day of the week of the work week or the uh -huh. school week you could at least look forward to like oh i gotta go back to school or i gotta go to work tomorrow but well at least uh the game on monday night's gonna be a good one and then once you're at that point you're already through the worst part of the work or school week you're already past the first day so that's I a great like point that. i like the carrot that monday night football presented they lost a lot of points with me after they lost uh mike Tarico though yes well listen uh, yeah, once 
wants to Rico left, but you know, you're too young, but I encourage you to go back and dig up the original, or not the original group, but go back and dig up uh, the Cosell broadcast. Yeah, I could do a bad Cosell, too, if you want. Oh, yes. How many bad impressions can I do? John Cosell here, and I'm uh, drinking uh, while I'm doing the game. That was terrible. I'm going to embarrass me. That, I mean, yeah, that really was bad. I mean, like, you're, you're. I mean, I guess in the same zip code, but mm-hmm. you ain't too close. Like, I don't think I do a Cosell either. Like, look at him go. He could go. Let's get to it. That's two minutes. He he used to do the highlights mm-hmm. at halftime of Monday Night Football, and this was in an age when they you didn't see highlights from other games. You wouldn't have access to them, so I would be allowed to stay up till halftime to see Cosell's two minute rip, and they would show one highlight from each game, and I'd be allowed to stay up and uh, look at that. It was always great. Who was the guy that used to sing the uh, the song at the end of the games when the game was, like, unofficially over? Who was that guy? Dandy Don Meredith, the yes. former QB of the uh, of the Dallas Cowboys. Turn out the lights, the party's over. All right, I think uh, – how can we end on a higher note than that? What could we do that would be the higher note than that? I think that's where we're going to have to leave this one. You could sing a song with me. What do you want to sing? Turn out the lights. The party's over. The party's over. over. See? Danny Don, another King of the Hill alum. Was he really? Yeah, Hank Hill um, wins a trip to the Superdome in New Orleans to throw a football through a big Alamo uh, beer can. And he ends up, instead of going for the million dollars where he would throw it, he does the 100,000 and has Danny Don throw it, and then he misses. Then Hank Hill slugs him. I don't understand the last four minutes of our conversation. Me you neither. didn't know who Dandy, Dandy Don was. No, I knew who he was. I just I couldn't oh, picture okay. his name. You know what I mean? I got you. Okay. Yeah. I was like, wait a second. Now you do know who he is. He's throwing out. The, he's throwing things in a cartoon, but you didn't know. Uh, all right. But now I'm up to speed. I have to the out NFL how network. Works. I have the NFL network, and I don't have a girlfriend. I know a lot about Don, Danny Don Meredith. <laughs> It all makes sense. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, so Dave Damashek, he has the Dave Damashek football program. You can find him on Twitter at Damashek. Hopefully he will be kind enough to talk to me again. And uh, thanks. How did this go? Did it go all right? Um, I set expectations very high, as, as you know, I'm a very big fan of yours. And I think we surpassed it. Well, I feel bad because I have, uh, to pull the curtain back, I've heard an echo the whole time. Hmm. So I feel like I hope that uh, you and the audience isn't hearing that same echo because my voice is annoying enough the first time around that you don't need to hear it a second time. I don't think we are. If we are, um, I don't know. Sorry then to call listen. me back and we'll start fresh. Yeah, let's do that. Perfect. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dave. Sure thing, man. Good talking. <laughs>